a lot of debate at TNT Towers recently about loans and the value of loans and the best loan players. And we thought, what better way to resolve this heated issue <laughs> than to get in front of the mics and cameras and discuss it. And I'm joined by my podcast pal, Stephen O'Malley. Yeah. Yes, you are. What we are going to do here is figure out the best 11 loan signings from the year 2000 onwards. Do you think it's going to be difficult, Stephen? <laughs> One or two positions. One or two mm. positions may be trickier than others. Some pick themselves, I think. Um, we are we are going very much off the yes. off the top of the head here. You guys are going off yeah. the top of the head. I've got the list here compiled, and I'll tell you <laughs> what, Martin Melly, there are some names here that even when the list was getting put together, I was still saying who. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there will be, won't there? I'm trying to like picture in my head what I could pick, and there's some positions you're thinking they're all crap or. Not a lot of options there, yeah. so there's going to be some poor players. There's surely there'll be some bad players well, in this here. This is this is what it's for. People, people dismay at the the use of loans at Celtic. Mm -hmm. So we are going to establish that you can put put together a solid world class team <laughs> of strictly was, loan players. There's one player in particular here who who's on loan, and I completely forgot he was even on loan. I, I thought we'd sign them and just sold them because he right. was so bad. I was like, <laughs> he was a loan player. Well, thank fuck for that. It didn't cost us anything back in the year 2005 whenever he signed. Right, so Celtic have got a decent history of loan goalkeepers yep. to start with, don't we? Some strong contenders in there, a couple of which have signed permanently, but we don't consider that. That's not within the rules. Yep. Only the loan periods are considered. If they signed permanently for the club, we disregard everything they did after loan players because this is purely about our loans worth doing. 100%. So here, so here we go. Goalkeepers, it's going to boil down to two big ones, isn't it? And it's mm. often the debate who was the best out of these two. I think I know the two you're talking yeah, about, but I, don't say just yet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> But I'm I'm open. I'm open to, to well, other options. We need to bring in the rules here because one of them had a few loan stints. Yeah. The other had a loan stint which was turned permanent very early oh, on. So I we thought you were talking about Victor Noring and my <laughs> boss Kamina. Oh, <laughs> oh, I, I never remember they two. Describe what either of them look like. No. You can't. No, next segment. Victor Noring's <laughs> going to have blonde hair probably. Sounds it. Sounds it. Is he? Sounds it. No, we, no, we, Is he? You're asking the wrong guy. I can't, <laughs> honestly, I remember Lubos Kaminar signing for Celtic yeah. Park. There's a picture of him outside Celtic Park. Victor yeah, Noring. or something. He played for Fulham. Victor Noring is a complete mystery yeah. to me. And I wanted to keep it that way. I didn't even bother researching Good. the guy. He, he was absolutely dynamite and one of the football managers. So that's the only reason I know him because I'd always sign him because you get him a couple of hundred grand and then that was your keeper sorted. But. Kaminar, like if he's sitting there, I would that. All right, mate. And I noticed Logan Bay wasn't in here, and I assumed he was alone. So did we? Pay, we must have paid money for him then. Harvey he was knew a Logan Bay. Yeah, yeah, I think so. What would he made about three appearances for the club or something like that? Give me his full name, Stephen. Logan Love Rat Bay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks to the tabloid press. <laughs> but let's let's focus on let's focus on the loan signs. The two years are obviously talking about Arthur Boruts, depending on uh, what pronunciation you want to go, and Fraser Forster. Tough one, and that is the two best keepers I've seen in my path. But we're sticklers for the rules here, and I think I have to go with it. Oh, see, because Fraser Foster came back on that last loan, and we had the the Fraser Foster final, as it's known, where he just kept Rangers out. I think he edges it for me as a Celtic goalkeeper, but Boric's character just sort of pushes him right up as well. <laughs> but I think I'm going to need to go Fraser Foster here. It's a strong start, isn't it? I wonder if all the positions are going to go like this. It depends if you're going for like good players, good players or patter, which is which is you know serious football or patter, which is the dilemma we face in this podcast every time we record one. Mm. It's, a, it's a great position to start with. We've got, we're debating between two genuinely like European class at their peaks, mm. European class goalkeepers. So let's see how the the rest of the eleven falls. But Fraser Foster. A long time at Celtic, and so, quite a lot of that was on loan. Was it a mm. two-year loan initially? Then it came back, or something like that. Something is it? Like yeah, that, yeah. two years, and then obviously came back S yep, for the same, nine in a row. Same penalty, came back for the nine in a row. The nine in a row, he was absolutely outstanding. Yep. But some of the performances there, and previous to that, he did the game against Barcelona and all that. He was already a top-class keeper, but when he came back, and a few eyebrows were raised because. Oh, he's Southampton's third-choice keeper, whatever it was. You know, he's not played for ages. 
he can't play with his feet. You remember all that stuff? Yeah. When he came back, mm. a few eyebrows were raised, but some of the performances he put in that season for Neil Lennon were... He had a penalty in his debut, didn't yeah, he? Yes, <laughs> astounding. The, yeah. Melly has already mentioned the, the Fraser Foster final, where mm. he saved a penalty from Morelos, who, who at that point hadn't scored against Celtic. He had numerous chances to score in that game as well. The saves against Lazio. That one in the last second. Breathtaking stuff. Sutton, Sutton says he's no right to save that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely incredible stuff. Arthur Boric comes up with Fraser Foster in the hot debate over who's basically the best modern keeper that Celtic. Yeah. Maybe even better. I mean, some of the stuff Fraser Foster was doing in that last season for, for Neil Lennon, uh, the, the second last season for Neil Lennon, but the last, the last league title win where up there with you know, all-time great performances oh, I, for Celtic goalkeepers. Mm. So I have to go with Fraser Foster, but I do feel the need to nod towards Arthur Boric as a, a modern great and a real cult hero yeah. and basically massive Celtic they were both, guy. Both fantastic shortstoppers yes, yeah. in oh, their aye. prime. You know, some of Arthur Boric's European performances, his, his penalty saving ability as well is unbelievable. We were talking about it recently on the way Easter Road. There was a save at Easter Road where he just tips it with a fingertip and it hits the post and goes wide. It's one of the best saves I've yeah. ever seen. But the thing with Boric is with, with this, he signed on loan initially, but when he came in, he came in after the the art media, art media game and we get beat 5-0, he came in after that and he was brilliant. So we, I think it was like 600 grand was the agreed fee. Mm. We ended up paying it before the end of the year just to sign this guy up immediately. We've, we've never done that before, have we? We've never loaned a player and went, no, actually, we better fucking pay that check. <laughs> that's a, well, this, is a, we, this is a steal. It's when you take something to the supermarket till and you think it's like whatever and they scan it and go, oh, that's only 99p, like quick pay. Get out before they <laughs> notice. Well, taking this season, as we record this as an example, we've got two really, really high performing loan players in the team just now and mm. Jota and Carter Vickers and the fans are all clamming for it. Get these guys signed up but the club are very relaxed about it. It's not like they're going to just say, get this deal done right now before anyone else notices. So back then, for them to just go ahead and do the deal when anything could happen, he could yeah. get injured yep. or anything. So that's what a loan deal is for at the end of the day. And that's what all of these guys were about to talk about. It's were cu for. Curious position with Fraser Foster, isn't it? He, he spent five years at Celtic. He's played five seasons for us, but he's only ever had a two-year contract. <laughs> yeah. <'Cause laughs> it, 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 three, three seasons on loan at one club is almost unheard of. He effectively had three debuts, didn't he? Because uh, yeah. he, he had his initial debut, he had his permanent signing debut, and then he had the, another debut after he played for Southampton. For he probably had years. the best of both worlds as well for a period because he's picking up that Premier League wage oh, whilst aye. actually regularly playing for Celtic. Yeah. Um, I think for me though, I, I, like, I've got the devil on my shoulder here <laughs> and, and, and I really want Arthur Boric because of that personality, that cult that's around it. But I know Fraser Foster's just an outstanding... I think Fraser Foster's the better goalkeeper Right, yeah, yeah. but at the end of the day, don't care about that. It's Arthur Boric for me. <laughs> uh, but in the in the rules of this, you have to go with the only the loan spell of Boric, so you've only got a couple of months in there. Whereas Foster's got three seasons. I know that, but uh, if we're going to adhere so strictly to those rules, then there'd be no reason to pick Arthur Boric whatsoever because I think he was on loan for one single month or something <laughs> but, like that. But his uh, his personality sort of comes in a bit later, doesn't it? When we yeah. get to know the real Boric man, what a guy! By the way, make no mistake about it. See, when we're talking about Foster being, you know, probably the better, marginally the better yeah. overall keeper for a time, for a couple of years period before his fitness went and his his probably his attitude and his application mm. kind of went a wee bit with Boric. One of the best goalkeepers in Europe. Oh, he's genuinely. Yeah. Remember, See his the way he used to throw himself at yeah. things. Remember Unbelievable. His, his performances at one of the Euro competitions, Euro uh, 2008, mm. I think was it would have been. Yeah, where he kept Germany out until the oh, one of the last eight. last few minutes. He he kept Germany, absolutely top class keeper who probably should have been playing at a higher level had he not mm. let let himself go a little oh, bit. Of a Domino's it. pizza. Wasn't <laughs> yeah, he? He's saying that he was play, he's still playing and he's. In his 40s now. So I think that's what he needed, though. I think he needed the change. He needed a, a different lifestyle, maybe. Because like, in Scotland, I think he basically just sort of let it go to pot. Victor Norig still playing. <laughs> Welsh as well, chatting there. I googled him. See, since he left Celtic, he has played 32 games. Um, um, un unbelievable. He's been, he's, there's, on his uh, CV, on his Wikipedia, there's like eight clubs after Celtic and it's just zero appearances as he slam Duncan in at number one here is he, is he, <laughs> yeah. by god that's Victor oh, Noring's he, music a bit of a, a bit of an unknown a bit huh? of a wild card <laughs> we don't know what to expect with him because nobody's ever seen it of him so just to recap Stephen you went for Foster Fraser Foster for and me you went for Foster Foster and I'll give Boric the vote even though he's not getting in the team Fair okay. enough. right so that's a goalkeeper sorted Boric on the bench um, <laughs> <laughs> right back 
Martin Melly. Do you think? No, I don't know about that. We must have better options there, surely. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> See, when you're thinking about right backs, you'll think about McNamara, Didier Gat, mm. even Andres Heinkel, Lustig, and then into the, the team they're now. Struggling to think of any decent loan ones, but we've kind of, we always thought, oh, we need a new right back. But we've, we've always done well with right backs that stay for a long time, like McNamara, Gat, and Lustig. But right now, oh dear. Stephen, the thing about right backs is when you when you think through the list, and this is actually to a couple of lists. Players come and you got you think alone. Oh, you'll be good. Do you know what I mean? There's a few <laughs> names that have come in alone, and you thought, oh, wait a minute, we might have a player here. And you know, as we touch on right back, there's a couple. One in particular that we signed from Germany and Jeremy told you, and you think, <laughs> Bruce Dorman, right? I'll tell you what, no, but it could could be a player here. What a regrettable episode that was uh-huh. in Celtics history. Where to start on Jeremy Tolian? All massively positive about him coming in. He had all the pedigree, as he said. But you see Borussia Dortmund. You know, but I'm old enough to remember that there's a kind of trend with Celtic when they sign players from a big club, one of the European giants, tend to be garbage yep. for some for whatever reason that is. It's always the wee gems that out, outperform the the guys from the the super clubs. But I saw Borussia Dortmund and I thought, right, player must be a player in must there. Be but I watched them play and. It, I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen a less enthusiastic Celtic player in my entire life. He just looked absolutely, mouse. Yep, absolutely miserable. My lasting memory of him is his performance against Valencia, oh, right. uh, mm. where he got sent off for repeatedly doing the same thing. <laughs> so he just kept pulling jerseys, letting people skin him, and he would just foul him on the way past. He, he did it a number of times, and then he basically got sent Joke's on it. you, though, because as we record this this week, he was linked with Bayern Munich. Yep. Really? Yes. Wow. Which shows what I know. So was Frimpong, yeah. incidentally. Yeah. I was, weirdly, I was going to say, in all this sea of garbage loans I've had at right back, there were two permanent signings at right back that actually looked very good, but they were very, very brief. So there was Jeremy Frimpong, mm. who, to, by all accounts, has been great in the Bundesliga and is ready for his next big move. And I think he's Hold only, up to the Dutch squad as well. Dutch squad, okay. He's, he's only 21. He's been linked to Real Madrid and Bayern Munich very mm. recently. And the other one was uh, Mohamed, uh, Mohamed uh, Abd El Hamid. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, oh, Abd El Hamid. Um, who looked absolutely brilliant for a time and then just, he was made of glass. He was made of chewing gum and basically just fell off. <laughs> the the thing about him, remember when he came up, I was like, well, like, what's the catch with this guy? And yeah, even, yeah. I think even Neil Lennon said, I'm wondering what the catch is. And then like, he was just like persistently injured and then he went home and you think, ah, that's the catch. Well, I, I struggled with his name there. It's yeah. Hat, Hatem Abdel. Well, Hamid, struggled, I, I can imagine yeah. Neil Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> I had a tricky time with it. But yeah, I remember Neil Lennon saying that, saying that, mm. I don't know, I guess it was like 900,000 or something we paid yeah. for him. I don't know what the catch is and it became very, very apparent. It's a shame he got homesick, I think, and went home after a season and a bit or so, but yeah. that was injury fraught as well. I think, I remember he played, he was immense against Lazio as well. Yeah. Rangers was, at Ibrox as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So he, he was a good he was a good player, but the, the rest, we'll get into the loans, but Toljan, wow, what a, what a regret. That's what you bring him in for, but isn't it mm. European games against Valencia? That'll be ideal for him. <laughs> He's got all the experience of playing with Dortmund. Sent off. It just shows you, though, sometimes like, a player comes in, it doesn't matter the level he's playing at, if he's got the heart of a mouse, as you put yeah. it, Martin Melly. And a lot of the time when with these big clubs, I suppose it's a lesson for you. Apart from one player who we will get on, onto it right back, but when these big clubs let a player go on loan that's been established at them for a period of time, you should maybe treat it with caution instead of excitement because you end up getting a Diego Laxalt, you end up getting a... A Jeremy Toya, and you think, God, these is that we a now, spoiler for another uh, here? <laughs> you see now we see why these guys have been sent on loan, and now he's playing for Sassuolo. I don't know why Bayern Munich are looking at him for whatever reason, but aye, it was one of these ones with just a real, real disappointment. Oh, it's terrible, and there's going to be a lot of options from that January window, isn't it? Because all we done was bring in loan signings. We're just like, aye, Brendan Rogers leaving at the end of the season, and <laughs> 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 just brought in all these loan guys. Um, Stephen. Anybody right back sticking out for you? John Joe Kenny. It's another <laughs> one. Was the, John Joe Kenny. John Joe Kenny, whose his career's having a wee bit of a resurgence at the moment, by all accounts. He's playing as a sort of right-sided centre half or something mm. like that for Everton. I think he, uh, there was a game recently where he played a right of a back three and Patterson was ahead of him. He was the kind of right wing back. Mm. So, yeah, it might just be one of those ones where 
he was terrible for Celtic. There's no getting away from it. Awful for Celtic. His performance against Rangers, remember the one where he put it out for a corner about 50 yards um, yes, or something like that? Yeah, the, it was awful. But it might just have been that he was dropped into this absolute fiasco, couldn't get his feet at all, and then just I'm, didn't I'm, know where he was and left again. I'm willing to give that, uh, you know, a, a, a wee card mark. You know how yeah. when you're doing a, an exam and say like the ceiling falls in or there's a flood and the teacher comes and they put a wee mark beside your card to say, you know, just something happened in this exam. Give this person... He was ill that day. Die yeah. A wee bit of credit. <laughs> a wee bit of credit. I'm willing to do that for last season for a lot of these players yeah, that right. came in um, because, again, John Joe Kenny just straight back down to Everton and they're picking him. They're playing yeah. him. Yeah, and they even brought in Patterson and he seems to be playing ahead of him. They've got still got Seamus Coleman there. Lampard praised him recently and I was reading a wee interview with him and he said... Going to Celtic was just all wrong for him. It, mm. The team wasn't playing well. He wasn't right uh, mentally. And he just said it was just a terrible time. I think he came back in the summer there and went and seen a sports psychologist and sorted his head out. And he said he's just been flying since. How many of these uh, right backs have his new Lennon had his hands on? <laughs> <laughs> well, be, the other one would be Moritz Bauer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Moritz Bauer was another one. Came. Did nothing left again. That's uh, it. Yeah, another one comes on. from a, a a big club, an established club. Do you think? Oh, we might have something here. Yeah, I think he that was Germany just. Well, uh, that was just the emergence of Frimpong yeah. that kept him back, wasn't it? Because we had, we signed El Hamid, Frimpong, and Bauer all in the same window, but Frimpong overtook the two two of them and just became this absolute gem out of nowhere. And El Hamid was solid enough and our player. So Moritz, all we really remember him for is. That jacket, and that time we seen him in the Drake with a Balenciaga hoodie. Tracky on well, that's it. what we'll remember him for. The viewers <laughs> of this will remember. Uh, Celtic obviously have got a connection to FC UFA because that's where he ended up oh, after right. Celtic on loan. Oh. So there's obviously a bit of business to be done there, him and Bowling Goalie. Anyway, cut the shit. <laughs> Give us the good ones. Give us the good ones. Okay. Those are the funny ones, obviously, uh, right? We've done that bit. Right. Oh, there's, I think there's one more, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the one you're obviously going to pick, this is what Stephen's getting at, is John Joel Perry Dumbey. Aye. That's the only it. one to score a goal out of that lot, I think. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Those are the options that are right back. Yes. There's your wow. right back options, lads. Pick away. Well, Zumbi, let's let's establish him a, a little bit. Uh, came out was that Strachan? Strachan, uh, Strachan, yeah, Strachan, Strachan, yeah. Main, mainly known for having scored in a cup final, the yeah. only goal yeah. in a, a cup final. A which, terrible game. Oh goodness me, yeah. There Lovely was, day, but there was a few rough uh, cup finals run run about that time, but that was that was nothing. Nothing special and basically... It was made. a slide tackle as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dumbi scored a, a slide tackle. Is he a Cameroonian international? Um, yep, that, yep. Yeah, Cameroonian international spent a period of loan, then we signed him. Which you for, mm. uh, bet you forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> completely. I bet you yeah, forgot that we actually completely. signed him. Yeah. He, was, he came in in the January, didn't he? And he was all right, but he'll always have that cup final. Whereas... The rest of them don't really have a defining game between them. Do, well, Toyan is the Valencia game, but he gets sent off in that. <laughs> Moritz Bauer, the only thing I can really remember from him playing was getting Jordan Jones trying to half him and injuring himself, so that brings him up a bit. We didn't even get any long throws out of him. No. That, that was his thing. He had long throws, it didn't was even a, get one. A very mysterious transfer of line because we took him on loan, barely played him. Signed him on a permanent deal, barely played him. He went out injured him when he was out injured, we extended his contract and then let him go at the end of the season. Who is that? Sorry, John Joe Perry oh, Doombe. Oh, Doombe. Oh, Doombe. Oh, Doombe. Oh, Doombe. oh, no, sorry, I was yeah. talking about Doombe there. Uh, he, he, he did get injured quite a lot, didn't he? But it just, but we had a lot of right backs at the time under Strachan, mm. but Mark Wilson was always injured. I think Telford, Telford of mm. might have been away by then, but we just seem to have all these right backs that kept getting injured and Doombe yeah, this... came in and. Just I uh, Paul Caddis played. I think he played against Barcelona because with injuries. So I've just seen me a bit stopped with right backs, but all injured ones and not very good. So by rights, does that mean you just have to pick Dumbe because he's the yeah. only one of of, a, of any note? He's, he's got that game, isn't he? <laughs> he's got that. He's got that blue chip in there. He's got that gold star. It's Dumbe. Right, centre halves. Now, Ooh. you can probably have a couple here if you wanted, depending mm -hmm. on what way you want to line your team up. And I think there's Chain one... Duffy's going right in there for me. Well, I think there's, <laughs> I think, I think there's one that, that, that's probably just going to skip right to the front of the queue, Stephen. Jason Denier. That's Jason it. Jason Denier, who was famously... Well, that wasn't it, but All right. <laughs> he, he, he's semi-front of the queue as well. Jason Denier is the first one that leaps to mind. Because... I thought, I thought his boy would be in. Mm. Called him from the very start. Carter Vickers, I think Melly's yes. referring oh, to Cameron that. Cameron Vickers, I was referring to as well. We'll, we'll get to that. Cameron Carter-Vickers is, is absolutely outstanding and exactly how a loan 
who do you think who do you think's better, him or Denier? Who do you think's been the better loan signing oh, to this point? Because um, I think it's very close. Oh, yeah, is, yeah. Eh? I, th- I think I think we may even have in conversation stumbled across our potential pairing. <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I don't know what the other options are apart from Shane Duffy, who's al- al- already come up. But uh, that that's a tough one. I suppose it depends. It's very early for Carter Vickers. Mm. Denier only had that one season, of course. Yeah. But he has gone on to have a very, very uh, an admirable career, actually. Um, you say it's very early, mate. It's March. <laughs> well, it's business end of the season. And... Uh, that's fair. What I mean is, in in terms of his career, because I think Denier probably gets an even stronger signing the longer his career goes on. Yeah. He was captain for Lyon. And I think yeah. he's on the verge of another move. He was, I think, like with Barcelona quite recently. Still so, only 26. I see. Really? Aye. Wow. The, the thing with Denier is played under Ronnie Dyla in a league that had no Rangers in it. Mm. So, yes, he won the league. We had a semi-decent run in Europe where he, him and Van Dijk played against Inter Milan. And when you, me and Tom done uh, watch that game for a, a podcast during lockdown and Denier didn't make mistakes, but Van Dijk was culpable for a couple of the goals. Yeah. So it looked, when you, if you're looking back at that game, Denier looks the better player mm. than Van Dijk then. I think it's just with Denier, he's a wee bit smaller as well and not as as physical as Van Dijk. But Denier was a great player. I love watching him play that centre-back pairing. It was unbelievable. It's just a shame it was only for the one season. Yeah. Honourable mentions, Jamie? Can we get, oh, we, do you want can, some honourable yeah, on, mentions? Can, honorable can, mentions can or... you tempt us? Can you break up that partnership? Oh, or, I thought of an absolute beezer. Go for it. Remy Gershon? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I reckon if I, I held up a picture of Remy Gershon. Remy Gershon. <laughs> Gershon, right, there you go. That's how memorable, <laughs> memorable he is. If I held up a picture of him, Victor Norang and Lubos Kamina, right, <laughs> I don't think many Celtic fans will be able to name who's who. Uh, nah. Legitimately, I don't. I don't no. think you could. Rami Gershon was another one came in late at the end of the window. A doo doo dahan. Yep. Did you know? You told me something weird about him. It was uh, quite recent. It came out that his agent had asked Celtic to sign him because he needed to get out of a club because he wasn't having a good time or something. Was it you oh, that told it me? Definitely that? wasn't me because that's uh, news to me as well. I, it was something about he wasn't having a good time at wherever he is. So Peter Law and Doudan brought him in with just to get him out of this club for six months and he barely Sorry, played what <laughs> <laughs> no I, I, look I, that's I'm initially right if that's true what Melly's saying right take it as true right uh, if uh, Stephen if you hear that your initial reaction is to recoil like that sounds absolutely bizarre but the fact is that's the first time you've heard that that might happen all the time oh, well, yeah. uh, it, will. it, it might happen not yeah. going to take this guy he's not having the best time and do you know what I can believe that because he, ha- he never played for us yeah. <laughs> see for all the talk about scouting and analytics and all that these days I think still the vast majority of deals, and especially deals of that nature, of loans that, that come in out of nowhere, are all just agent stuff. Oh, it's yeah. all just agent. Agent will do a deal with such and such. And Contacts, I can get you this guy. But the day, it's no harm in Celtic, is it? It's a loan. Somebody yeah. else is paying his wages. We take him. According to his Wikipedia, played three times. It must have been. I don't know. I can't I remember. I remember, I remember him, him playing at Inverness, I'm sure, but or Ross County, one of the two, but nothing else. So oh. it's a valiant effort from, Ram, from <laughs> well, Rami Gershon to squeeze into this team, but sadly it has been rejected. Right, so you could you could have Ramon Vega. Um, oh, I now big, then. Big player. <laughs> now um, my eyebrows are raised. Treble, <laughs> treble winner. Yep. Don't, don't pick just yet because there's a few, and I think you might be keen on the last one. You okay. could also have uh, Philip Benkovic. Oh, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. You could have Shane Duffy, the aforementioned Shane Duffy. You could have Tyler Blackett. <laughs> utility player, I think, could play a number of positions. Yep. Um, or do we? <laughs> Fuck it all, mate. Do we? Do we? 45 minutes of pain, man. 45 minutes have been run ragged by Tom Brayton yep. uh, yeah. at, at Clyde. Yeah. Bullied all over the pitch. Chinese international, do we? One of the most famous. Chinese rather, international captain. Yep. Yeah. One of the most infamous signings in Celtic's history. He was one of those guys who came in and we were constantly being told by Gordon Strachan, yeah, we're building up. He's a, he's a project and all that. Mm. We're building him up. And he was there for most of the season or, so, or like months before he played a game and it was 45 minutes against that against Clyde. And, and that, that was it. It must have been the January or February because Keane signed, or Keane signed in December. So was it like the league, the Scottish Cup third round when we first came in, he came in and Roy Keane's debut, I was, oh, this... Fanfare and all that, and Dewey just gets absolutely ripped apart, man. The best uh, centre back out of a billion people was the joke <laughs> when he joined because he was the uh, Chinese international captain. Centre back was well, if he's the best out of a billion people, there you go. he must be good. I'd love to hear the inside track on him because you know when he came in, he, he must have been terrible in training because when I know Gordon Strachan now saying, "Oh, he's a project, and we're going to work him and build him up," and then you play him against Clyde 
you yeah. know, and I think what, what league were Clyde in at that point? That, two leagues below it? No, I think it was I just think, one. Yeah. Was it one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The point I'm making is knowing what we know now about the football parlance and the way things go and the stories that are told to the press and the reality, he was obviously just shite. Yeah. And Strachan thought, oh God, I need, to, I need to give this guy a game somewhere so we'll play him against Clyde. Surely he can't make an arse of it here. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he <laughs> he did. absolutely did. I think the he was terrible, but See, thinking about Shane Duffy as well, he probably goes into that John Joe Kenny category 100%. as well because he's went back to Brighton and he's doing quite well. He's playing in a team where Graham Potter's a good manager. You wanted him for the hoops mm. job, didn't you? And he plays football with his, his back line. I think they usually play a back three. So he's getting games in with a lot of decent defenders. So it's just another one that was just didn't work out, did it's another it? another asterisk. Isn't it? It Mitigating is. circumstances for these guys. It was a hey. disaster. <laughs> hey, you, Lenny you're over there. No, fucking <laughs> Lennon. The, the difference is, Stephen, Neil Lennon probably was the mitigating circumstance. <laughs> yeah. Neil Lennon's sitting in this chair, all these lights going on, and all these players coming in from all over the place. They're crap. He's like, there's mitigating circumstances. I can't even work out what it is. And it's you. <laughs> right. So, all these good players are crap. They were, they were a disaster, but, you know, r- reasons. Yes. Reasons for it, possibly. So, I really, really feel bad for Shane Duffy because see if it worked out for him see mm-hmm. if he came up this season for example he would have been a hero no, so players, Celtic fans would have loved Shane Duffy yeah. to go back to Ramon Vega for oh, a I second say, I don't yeah. think we should just pass over that huge fan of him aren't you yep Ramon Vega a treble winner let's not forget mm-hmm. that's that's massive compared to any of these other options None, no one else has done that uh, he was huge in that that season that first Martin O'Neill season came in for six months I think it was came in around mm-hmm. January this was before transfer windows but he came in for basically the back half of the season yep. scored big goals he two scored in his debut two, two in his debut against Aberdeen was that a pivotal in that treble win so shouldn't be discounted never really amounted to much after that mm. there's been various talk about how he was offered a new contract at Celtic but had more an offer of more money down south I think it was Watford was it uh, Viali was the manager it's a big pool so Viali's um, Watford I think he went down there weird for that a Swiss guy to be so concerned about money <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so Ramon Vega I think is is very much an honourable mention in there well but, what we could do is leave it open for a back three because we don't know positions. And, and but Black, it's putting his hand up for left back. Right? <laughs> well, that's it. He's the utility man. Yeah. So do you want me to leave that a wee bit open? Is there two that you want to nail down yep. right now? I think Denier goes in. And, and I think Vickers, and I think goes, in Vickers goes in for me because you know it's a wee bit of recency bias there versus a wee bit of nostalgia yeah. where I'm on Vega, but I think Carter Vickers takes it. I think when you're talking about problem positions since Martin O'Neill's time at Celtic. I think the the number one problem position for us has always been and even today still remains left back. Oh, mm, yeah. We've always we've always had a period of ha- have a really solid outstanding left back. He leaves or whatever doesn't play anymore, gets sold, retires, leaves, and then we struggle for seasons to get someone good in. And then we finally get good in. They leave and think, oh god, another five years of this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what's wrong with Bowen Goli? Like a great player. <laughs> we have really struggled since Kieran Tierney, and I'm really struggling to think of. MD. But who was the best left back? But if you want to, I want to wind the clock. But so, so let's go back the way, right? So we struggled when we sold Tierney, right? But when Tierney emerged, who was the best left back before Tierney? It was Aguirre, and even then he was patchy at uh, best. And then it, you have to go back, what, another five years as Aguirre? I mean, I wouldn't even include like Lee Naylor. Mo Kamara. No. Mo Kamara. I mean, who was a good left back under Martin O'Neill? Well, Thompson um, played left wing back, so, um, but you can't really play him. Lloyd. Lawson would be the only one, really. Uh, that. Stephen Craney. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's really, yeah, it's a very, very difficult Between position. Tosh, McKinley and Kieran Tierney for an out-and-out left-back? Yeah. Nah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. It. And, and we did try and plug plug that gap with some tremendous loan signers. Tremendous? Uh, I can think of uh, uh, Badier El Kaduri and Michael Gray are the only two I can think of off the top of the head. No, I've already yeah. mentioned one today and you've forgotten about oh, it, which is understandable. Diego. Uh, Diego Laxalt. Diego Lax- no, Diego Laxalt and Braffid come into the, the same... Oh, Braffid yep. <laughs> Ed, Ed's and Braffid oh. come into the same category for me in that, I don't know why people do this, but don't ever tell me that uh, World Cup performance matters when no. signing a player ever again because Braffid played famously in a World Cup yep. final. Laxalt was... Th- there were one or two debates about this, whether he made it into like a World Cup team of, of the tournament. It was a certain publication to put him in it, but mm. he was memorable in that World Cup. But it matters not a jot. <laughs> not it, it, it shouldn't be taken into account. I fell off my chair when Braffid appeared in that World Cup <laughs> <Yeah>. final. <laughs> Who was it? Holland v. Spain, Nellis v. Spain? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that famous final, but it was a, a bloodbath. <laughs> was it a... 
Edson Braffid immediately leapt to mind when you said left back because he was a, an absolute disaster. I remember his performance was at the was it the four four game with Aberdeen. Aberdeen. He played you know, in that oh, game. He just handballed it, didn't yep, he? Yep, absolutely woeful. Uh, Diego Laxalt was just it was just a nothing signing, really. I don't know if he was necessarily absolutely terrible. I just think he, he amounted to absolutely nothing. Another one who came in. Uh, didn't really show much gutless uh, man yeah gutless no assists no attacking impetus not that great at going uh, defending either yeah, Becky Goonman Becky Goonman <laughs> Braids and all that um, a twitch streamer he had, the heart, he had the heart of a twitch streamer <laughs> didn't he we wanted a, a Uruguayan monster uh -huh. at, at left back and we had the we had the a Fortnite player. We said the only Uruguayan pussy, didn't we? Put an incel at left back. <laughs> Put that on his Wikipedia page. Yes. Well. <laughs> the, the heart of a Twitch streamer. <laughs> uh, left, left is, again, I feel like we're cutting through all the crap. There, there must be a good one in there somewhere. That, uh, lay it on me, Jamie. Let me see. Uh, no. no. I'm, I'm actually considering black for left back now. You've got, uh, you've got Michael Gray, Edson Braffy, Badi El Kaduri and Diego Laxa. Michael Gray's right. claim to fame. Some names that have yeah. come up here. So yeah, Michael Gray. Um, famous because he said something naughty or he disrespected Wayne Rooney's bud and Wayne Rooney lamped him at a player <laughs> of the year conference or something. I believe the story goes that Wayne Rooney knocked him out from a seated position. Mm, so Wayne he, Rooney was right? sitting down clocked Michael Gray and just put him flat. <laughs> did, they did like his boxing win, yeah, then so he gets sparked out by Phil Bardsley, Phil didn't he? in his kitchen, yep. So, right, well, that's they were Michael playing Gray. about there, were they not? Was yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah, boxing gloves on. Yeah. So that's Michael Gray. The other one we haven't discussed is Badia Rul Kaduri. Mm. And I'm going to make a, a case here. Oh, he made okay. McGregor look like that, didn't he? Scored against Rangers. Uh, so, yes. the, so does that automatically elevate him above all other options here? We, we yeah. did get pumped 4 2 in that game. We did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Lee Naylor's another left back that scored against Rangers. Yeah. Obviously, not on loan, can't be considered here. So it doesn't necessarily, it's not a mark of quality, is the point I'm making. Yeah, but Badir El Kaduri, I mean, little is known about his career at all. He's one of the most forgettable Celtic signings of all time. Well, see, I can. I can Picture him in a strip, I can picture him scoring that. Because he was about seven stone of pure nonsense. Yeah. Kaduri. But Michael Gray came into a Martin O'Neill team and I can't even picture him in a strip. <laughs> no. Like, you'd automatically think, oh, he came in in a Martin O'Neill game. It must, be, must have been half decent sword, but I uh, maybe get a vague memory of him playing at Easter Road or something, yeah. but I might be just pulling that from nowhere. At least Badia's got something. Wow. I mean, this is, this how is, did he get in there? This is, this, is how, this is how bad it is. I mean, Dumbe and Dumbe and Bidia El Kadir. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking backs. at my list. I just the only thing that's making me want to say lax out is the asterisk. <laughs> Aye, but the that's asterisk it. Years. But that is it. it well, well lax out did have that debut against Lille, was it? Where he won all those tackles that's right, and man. he played well. Well, he was the least shit player when we get beat two 0 off Rangers in the first derby of the season. That at Celtic Park, but I, 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 I really can't. Yeah, that's that that sums up his career, though, doesn't it? Because no player wants to sat here. No player wants to be discussed on a podcast where the highlight is mind that one game where he won <laughs> yeah. those tackles. Like that's the extent. That's the extent of his career. He had one good game at left back for Celtic against Lille. So is this this it? The choices are Lax out and Badia or Hobson's choice. Aye, that's it. Let's, um, do, let's do the vote then. Neither won the league either. I'd go with Badia just because he made McGregor look like it. I'll have to go with Badia just because I'm, I'm so bitter about who Laxalt turned out. Was Badia El Kadir, is it Moroccan? Was yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, Moroccan. Yeah, yeah. I think he played in Russia as well. Aye, was it, was it Russia or you know, Kazakhstan or something like that. One of the one of those countries. Um, oh God, it's got to be Badia El Kadir. I think it must have been. have to be, but, uh, no, but it does have to be. <laughs> the vote's already through. Mine is irrelevant. Uh, Edson Bryan's Bra still playing wow. at the moment. He's, he's playing for Palm Beach Stars. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a kid on American, a holiday team? Uh, a kid on American. Before that, I played for Austin Bold. Hey, America, <laughs> change the names <laughs> of your football teams. Austin Bold. So that that late curveball, can you be tempted with that, or is it? No, no, no. no Braffy's not making it in. Inexplicably, we have ended up with, and this is the only time he, his name will ever come up on any video or podcast we'll ever do. Is Badi <laughs> Rokadu? There we go. Badi Rokadu. We always talk about how important fullbacks are in modern football. <laughs> Look wow. what we've got for this team. Well, I suppose if you wanted to dig into it a wee bit just before we leave the fullbacks, is it just because I was about to say is it because our, our fullbacks have always just managed to have one decent one? 
and no backup whatsoever. So we've just went to the market and got anything we possibly yeah. could. Maybe not necessarily the case with Laxalt, um, because I'm sure he was saying to be first choice, but none of these other guys were saying to be first choice, no, really. No, mm. that's right. And uh, even Laxalt, Greg Taylor still kept him out of the team. Just to get no assist for Celtic as a left back who got forward is pitiful, man. So um, as we move into midfield, we've got a bit of a problem. Because oh. in Celtic's history, as we discuss it, we've, we've only ever dis we've only ever signed one out yeah. and out central midfielder on loan. Well, that presents some formation difficulties yes. there. Then okay. selection problems you've got there probably it's... kills off the back three. Then doesn't it? Right, right. Yeah, a bit exposed. Yeah. If we... so, who is it? I don't... Landry in it. It's got to be Landry and Gumo. Is that who you thought signed permanently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I didn't realise he was alone. Until Landry I looked, and Guemo. Until I looked it up, I thought I thought he was a permanent sign. I thought we've never signed. So we signed Landry and Guemo. And for some reason, I thought we had one Yama on loan as well before we signed mm, them. No. But it's no. not the case. Uh, and he came in under Mowbray, which we could probably make a team of Mowbray loan signings, mm. couldn't we? Man, he's just he came in at the start of the season. Thought he kind of looked all right, but then the longer the team played, you know. Like, Guy just runs about. That's all, yeah. all he does. He doesn't really have any redeeming Soro qualities. Soro vibes. Very, <laughs> oh, very, very similar to yeah. Soro. Yeah. Uh, I remember barely anything about Landry and Guemo. He was, he, he was the kind of number six sort of yeah. midfielder. And again, this, this is where he's going in the team. By default, let's cut to the <laughs> yeah. chest. He's a, he is in the team. But I remember almost nothing about him other than it was you know, a symptom of that season going absolutely off the rails. I don't remember him. I don't remember any decent performances. There isn't even the El Kaduri or no, the I think he scored, did there. No, I'd... have we accidentally stumbled upon something here that we've never maybe we should have noticed before that the sign of a failing regime is loads of loan players coming in. Yeah, because <laughs> every time we discuss these players, it's preferable. Ah, and then he came in on loan that season. We brought a load of players on loan, and then obviously the manager gets sacked at the end of the season. Like it nice. happened with Mowbray, Rogers, Rogers, Neil Lennon. The arrival of multiple loans spells probably the end in trust for a manager. <laughs> yeah, and well, last year was the sort of perfect storm, wasn't it? It was loans plus the guys we kept were all a year left in their contracts, yeah. so there was nobody really committed to the the club. Even like Scott Brown was out of contract at the end of the season, so there's definitely something in that. But to go through what twenty two years and only sign one central midfielder on loan, like, think of the guys that have come in for like, a season or so, like guys like. You kind of expect like maybe Donati was a loan signing, process, but we don't. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, right, this, process, is, uh, this is a blow. We've got one midfielder. Yeah. Positives, though, it leaves plenty of scope for lots of attacking players. Well, that's well, it. The yeah. glamour positions yeah. are freeing up here. Yeah. Oh, and what we could do is play a bit of Ange ball. We know that the two fullbacks, Dumbe and El Kaduri, aren't good at getting forward, mm -hmm. so we can move them inside to be okay. inverted fullbacks oh. beside Nguemo and just sit. Just sit. Don't do anything else. Sit there and stop goals. Uh, they can sit ahead of the two centre halves. All African free there. Oh, so nice. try, some, try people try us, oh, some people might accuse us of overthinking this formation. <laughs> <laughs> we're no. just, this is in depth. We're okay. doing this properly. Yeah, right. we're, so, do, we're doing this properly. So we're moving into the attack midfield positions. Oh. Very broad. So I'm not even going to bother distinguishing between left, right, and centre. Oh, we could we... just play a one and then three ahead. Yes, that's what I'm going to like say. It, so just like pick it. your so pick three your three interchangeable tens and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some good names in here. Some strong. Oh, there sure is, lads. Oh, <laughs> now, first name that pops into my head is Mohamed El Yunusi. <laughs> yes, <laughs> El Yunusi, mm. uh, solid player. It's just the first guy that comes in because big performances for Celtic mm. again. Who, a guy who's probably not going to be remembered all that fondly for his involvement in that season that, that keeps season coming up. Before, but... Yeah, the season before, big goals. He scored against Rangers as well, which has already bought some in their place in this team. He scored, uh, I think, a double against the future French champions yeah. in Lille. Mm. So he scored uh, scored about six goals in Europe that season. I think he scored Played against Lazio up front yep, as well. That's right. Lazio scored a couple in qualifying, I think, against Reykjavik and, and a couple of others. So he, he, he a big player for Celtic. It went off the rails when he came back for that second loan spell. But the, in the post Scott Sinclair mm -hmm. era, I think he did that job ably. And I, I, I'm a, a big fan of him, to be honest. I, there's a, a little bit of maybe. A kind of rewriting of his spell mm. at Celtic, where he, you know, he, he was heartless and all that. So, but he, he scored big goals for the club, and I, I haven't forgotten that. Yeah, but when we only came in the second season, we'd sort of switch to that three-five-two, and he just he could play off the striker. But that first season, I remember we, we the three of us were out for a wee TMT night out, and we were in getting dinner and having drinks, and it just came through that 
out of nowhere, Celtic yeah, had loaned uh, right. Mohamed El Yunusi, and we'd spoke about him. Mm -hmm. I think me and you'd spoke about him on a, a phone in with somebody said, Who could we get from England like the previous season? Yeah. Like him, came for Basel and all that. So, Scored against us before, of course. Yeah, well. yeah, for Molda. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, like, I really liked El Yunusi. I just I would have liked to have seen him in a. Well, I bet a manager, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, Elian is one of these players as well. He's, he's now playing for Southampton again. Yeah, he's yeah. mm -hmm. came to Celtic, was not fancy, but now he's had a really strong career, um, which, which is, can't be said for some of these guys. <laughs> but one yeah. in particular that's won on the list. He's, he's one of these guys where he gets goals and scores goals, but he's also, he worked really hard, mm. I always felt. He'd always put the shift in where he was playing off Edward uh, away in Lazio or where he's out wide. Do you remember the... And Cham's winning goal, it's uh, the ball's coming through and El Yunusi makes a run inside for Edward and then uh, and Cham goes in the yep. outside to create that space for the... So he's a very intelligent player. I, I really like El Yunusi. Yeah. Um, do you want me just to give you some of the players that you're probably not going to pick? Just put you out your misery, the <laughs> yeah. ones you're not going to remember. Okay. For example, Wakaso Mubarak. <laughs> <laughs> Scored a beezer of a goal oh, in Europe, oh, didn't he? Uh, Leipzig? Yes, yeah. Something yeah. Like that, that that group. Where oh, Salzburg? Had, oh, yeah, I think it was. Same thing. Same nah. thing. Um, a absolutely beautiful goal. Ronald mm -hmm. was really satisfying. Can I clip across it? Yeah, swerved into the, the opposite bottom corner. Absolutely good. Did Scott Brown score in that yeah, game yeah. as well? From memory, yeah. One of the one of the more forgettable Celtic teams that, but yeah, he, Wakaso, he went on to play in Spain, I'm pretty sure. There was yeah. a wee, the and wee... he had, again, he's, he's picked up lots and lots of clubs yeah, afterwards, yeah. you know? Uh, because of Wakaso, it's immediately put me in mind of another wide player that we can probably <laughs> disregard as well. And Tonev. Oh, yes, Tonev. <laughs> Alexander Tonev. The yeah. less said about him, the better, probably. probably yeah. so let's, skip, not touch, we'll, let's not touch that. We'll <laughs> skip <laughs> over that hot potato. Uh, Charlie Masonda, take it, he's oh. not getting your team. <sighs> 50 grand a week. Oh, what could have been. Charlie Masonda, one of the hottest young prospects in Britain at the time, maybe even Europe, because yeah. that was massive. We, we chased him, chased him, chased him. 32 teams or something yep, from that's him. that's right. Chased him, beat these all those teams to his thing. So Brendan Rodgers was really hot on it, and it was nothing. I remember before he made his debut, Mel, you and I were at the game, we were watching him just do some stuff oh. when he was warming up. He was, what, it was at half time, maybe. I think it was maybe on the bench. He came out and just was start, just doing wee tricks. And, he was doing keepy ups with his shin. Yep, keep, keep you ups with his shin. And I thought, this boy's going to have an absolute player. But <laughs> aside from his memorable assist against, against Zenit St. Petersburg for Callum McGregor's yeah. goal, uh, we flicked it over a player and, and put it into McGregor's path. That's it. Yes. That, that's his whole career. I remember he played, was it a rugby park? He played in that, that nice... Um, pitch. Yeah, the, <laughs> pitch. the green and darker green hoops with the gold uh, numbers. Oh, I think from memory, he, he came on there and just looked like a wee guy. Just looked like a wee boy lost. So, yeah, an, an unfortunate thing. And I think his season, his uh, career rather, has been... Not enough for a lot. He's serious. I don't know if he's got a club injuries. anymore, does he? Uh, I was just trying to find it out there while you two were talking because it's not entirely clear. He did release a statement on his uh, social media in November 2021 um, saying that he plans to leave Chelsea at the end of the season. Right. Uh, he went to, I think he went also on loan to Vitesse and mm, didn't yeah. play either, but um, like a, ma a major flop. Yeah, yeah, I think it was just one of those guys that had all the that pedigree when he was a young player, but just never fulfilled the potential. He did get a lot of injuries. I think he had a really bad injury last season and he didn't really get any game time and then his contract was up in the summer there. So, it must have made millions from Chelsea despite mm. not playing. Because I, I, I seem to remember the stories where Charlie Musonda was, he was one of the first, I'm sure I remember at the time, around about that time, he was one of the first youth players to get like a 50 grand a week contract. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, 40, 50. Yeah, I remember he was one of those first players. I remember it being discussed in some football show, like this kid's not played, he's barely played and we're yeah. paying these guys £50,000 a week, it's mental. He it, it might still get the team, but there's... <laughs> yeah. There's, oh no no that was a couple of beezers to come up I think but, uh, yeah I'm trying to rule out the people that are not going to get in the team yeah. just now and another one that you might want to discuss in our two is Bear getting Arzani Oof. Arzani another one another one who should have been a great Celtic player because he came on was it to play against Dundee or something like that he came off the bench and instantly looked up for it he was nutmegging people really really mm. skillful 
got a very, very serious injury. Now, the key thing about Daniel Arzani is that he was a two-year loan. Yeah. yeah. Two years, and he w- made, what, two appearances? Two sub-appearances, I think it was, the entire time. We decided is... to keep him on as well. Like, yeah. I think he got injured, and then at the end of the season came, there was a bit of chat whether we're yeah. going to let him go or keep him. We decided to keep him, and he just didn't play. So it must be the longest period at, spent at Celtic as a as a signing. Uh, mm. Probably a guy who was earmarked in the post era of another player who's be, who's about to come up here looked like the replacement for this guy yeah brought in as to probably do that role to compete with james forrest and uh, and other wingers it must be the longest period spent doing that having not played yeah at all i mean <laughs> two appearances i think it was brendan rogers was was he not about iffy about his signing as mm. well it was one of those ones oh it must be a lol signing it wasn't quite the Mar- was it Marion Shred where he said he had a yeah, million yeah. wingers but I think Arzani was was he not signed the night that we should have signed John McGinn mm, yeah. I remember we were playing Rosenberg I'm sure I might be getting that wrong but it just felt like what? so we didn't pay the money for John McGinn but you can go to Man City and loan a guy for two years and it was just it felt like oh no and just just a guy that but might be good but again bad injury aside He's not done anything since no. he left Celtic no. either, has Played he? Played at the 2018 World Cup. There was one of the youngest players. At the, oh, was it the 2018 World Cup? He, he was one of the youngest players in the tournament. He played a little bit for Australia, and that's what basically you know, grew his reputation. But no, nothing for Celtic, I'm afraid. Bring hey. him back, Angel. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, <laughs> Angel, Angel definitely be aware of him. So is there oh, anybody yeah. that you guys want to talk about that you think might get well, his team? Just, we, 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 I did mention Bergett there. No, I don't, I don't, I, we're don't definitely not going to get Bergett well, in. He's one of those guys who... Well, he came back to punish us, didn't he? Yeah. For whom the most impressive Celtic related performance was against us <laughs> scored two against us for was that Mulder uh, Malmo so, oh Malmo sorry yeah uh, one of those teams that put us to the sword during that time so yeah that no we can't put him in did he score in his debut though I think the he was Dundee under, United yeah, I think not a 5 or 6 nil victory and yeah. thought oh this is Ronnie Dyla's team and then nah Big handsome bugger, but nice. he sim- yeah. simply cannot consider it. No, it was Mould he scored against us playing was for Mould, and yeah. then he, I think he went to play for Ronnie Dial again at New York City. Oh, oh he, yeah. he did. He ended up playing for Ronnie Dial again at New York City, but again, I was quite encouraged by that sign, and he looked like a decent player, but yeah. just must have the heart of a mouse because I tell you what, that wasn't a great Celtic team. No, no, no. no. it wasn't a great Celtic. And if Ronnie Dial, were they countrymen? Am I getting that right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, if if Ronnie Dyler's no picking his countryman for not a great Celtic side, <laughs> there's uh, no way he's getting into our loan. I live no, in it's, uh, it's, it's a bad day when in January Gary Mackay Stevens brought in to replace you. So if you're talking about heart of mice, then geez, oh boys. So Stephen, anyone in this? I know me and you've spoken before about Diamante Kamara. Oh yeah, oh, yeah that's, good, that's another um, good shout. Yeah. We will eventually talk about Paddy Roberts. Well, don't worry, I see you <laughs> fidgeting in your chair there. Obviously, there's Jota from this oh, season. Oh, yes. Right. Okay. Dear Mansa Kamara, I uh, really liked as a player. Mm-hmm. Come on loan from Fulham in that famous transfer window where it all went haywire. We brought in a load of loan players, one of which has already been mentioned, Edson Braffitt. Kamara, it didn't, he didn't do enough at Celtic to be considered for this team, but he was a, a very, very good player. He, he had done it for quite a long time in England. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I understood the logic in bringing him in but it didn't really work out for him at all the yeah good, to, good. Uh, the look at yeah. <laughs> so yeah a good honourable mention but no not good enough for this team ok Melly Paddy Roberts let's what a boy man I remember when he came in he was on a 18 month loan wasn't he yeah yeah then obviously got extended but he came in at the end of Ronnie Dyla's first season and we were pretty crap at the mm. time there was no spark in the team we were just sort of getting through games but then you could see him playing in, no, was it Ronnie Dyer's second season? It was Ronnie Dyer's second season, sorry. And he came in and he was playing in reserve games because the first season of Dyer got quite good when Armstrong and Kai Steam came in. But the second season was dreadful, the dark Dyer days. And you're seeing this guy and he was banging them in for the reserves. There's, even if he's, get him in, he's yeah. a bit of quality. And he came in and the memorable games against Hearts and Aberdeen towards the end of the season where Celtic were getting over the line, but he was just coming in off that left side and bending it round, and then that's when the love started. I'll tell you why I can't have Paddy Roberts in this team, Stephen. I'll tell you why. Because he didn't endear himself to me because the, the Paddy Roberts' best period of football was at Celtic, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I think it was pretty clear for everyone to see that Celtic and Paddy Roberts was a great fit. But he just didn't sign that contract. He, we, we didn't want to join. There was no... He wanted to go and take his chance at Man City, which you can understand, but that is a gamble. But since then, his career's just went... And you think... To, and I don't... 
I don't think it's a leap to suggest that Paddy Roberts today, I think he joined, he's playing for Sunderland now, he's played mm. 68 minutes for Sunderland, all substitute I've appearances. I've seen 20 of them. Melly's seen 20 of them, he went on a pilgrimage <laughs> to the Stadium of Light to see his hero, Paddy Roberts. I think, looking back, Paddy Roberts would, if he was sat where Melly is right now, he'd probably say, do you know what, I probably should have stayed at Celtic. Well, I'm not, I'm not convinced there was ever a, a, a genuine option that Patrick Roberts could have signed mm. for Celtic permanently because if you remember back then Man City had paid 10 million for him mm -hmm. as a teenager mm -hmm. and this was only a year or two later I don't think Man City would have been willing to let him go for any less than that so Celtic aren't, simply aren't going to pay that I don't know if it was ever a genuine option but I, I do agree it's one of those players he's like the opposite of Denier I said earlier that Denier his reputation has grown because his career has been so good but I think Roberts suffers now from his career having gone downhill since he left Celtic. Now, everyone kind of looks back with his at his time at Celtic with a wee bit of suspicion as if he was never good enough, and that's simply not true. I think he was absolutely brilliant he's for just, Celtic. He's just not a young player anymore, is he? He's no, 25, he's as we yeah. record this today, when he's, he's at not. Celtic. He was that bright young player, yeah. and he was really good. I know I take the piss out of you a wee bit, Melly, you know, um, just about Paddy Roberts, not behind your back. Um, <laughs> and it, but he was a fucking great player for us. He oh, was yeah. such a good spark, and I'm just, I, again, I just kind of... I look at him sort of wistfully going, mate, look, look what could have happened. Do you well, know what I mean? It would have been great to see you stay on to sell with see Celtic. That, that first season with Rodgers, people now look back because of the emergence of James Forrest after the fact he has been excellent in the intervening seasons. He was brilliant for the late Rodgers and Neil Lennon. People look back and think, well, Forrest was always the better player. But see that first season mm -hmm. under Rodgers, mm -hmm. Patrick Roberts was picked for all the big games, yeah. all the big games against Rangers, the games in Europe. He's played and scored against Man City. Yep. Remember the Tom Rogic Cup final? Yep. Unforgettable Tom Rogic Cup final. At the Ro yep, Roberts played that game and James Forrest was an unused sub. So that's, that's the dynamic at the time. History has looked more fondly on James Forrest because of Patrick Roberts's subsequent career. I understand that. But for a time, for that first Roger season, Roberts was a superb player. He had a great... It's unusual to, to say this because you don't often get wingers, opposite wingers with a good partnership, but his dynamic with Scott Sinclair oh, they often set each other up for, for goals. And I think it was it was a great team to watch and Patrick Roberts was a big, big part of that. Remember towards the end of that invincible treble season, Wild to say that still, that it was Sinclair and Roberts and I think Forrest might have played as well, but there was no striker. Mm. So one of them was a false nine and we, we battered Aberdeen, we battered Hearts, but like Paddy Roberts, like, we all know I love him, but he had some good games against Rangers, the 5-1 game. He came on in the 2-1 game me and you were at mm. and that ball through for Armstrong to put it across for Sinclair, changed the game and then... He had that game against Motherwell where he scored the header, but that assist for Stuart Armstrong's goal where he puts it, takes out about four players, but puts it right through the eye of a needle for Armstrong just to control and first-time finish. And you don't often get wingers that can play those sort of passes, but he could always find them. It was just brilliant for me. He loved playing against Hearts and Aberdeen. He'd always come inside and bang one in, so he's, he's in for me. So Paddy Roberts is in for you, right? He gets one of the positions. There's a player we've not mentioned yet, Timo Weir. Oh, uh, now came in under Brendan Rogers, was good, and then sort of tailed off a wee bit. Um, yeah. Became more like famous for being like a meme, yeah, yeah. meme away as your coins. <laughs> uh, but he's had a strong career since. But we only considered the Celtic portion. Yeah. The, so uh, we only considered the Celtic portion. But he had a good career since, and he started quite well for us. He sort of comes into the Musonda and Arzani yeah. um, kind of category for me. And a guy who was very, very young, shouldn't have expected too much of him, but he came with this big reputation because of who he is and who his dad is. Yeah. And that's that's very difficult to, to live with if you're a guy who is the son of George Ware, one of the greatest players of the 90s and basically of the last you know, 50 years, <laughs> George Ware. So a, a difficult thing to live up to, but I think he, he was just okay. I think it was just okay. For Neil Celtic. Lennon didn't fancy him, remember Neil Lennon? I no, sent him back home early. Because right. he he'd rather go and play for America than yeah, play in the Cup thing. But right. with Weir, it was a disappointment because he, he came in in the January. We'd signed him like before the January, so we knew he was coming, but we'd just been beat by Rangers. I think Ryan Jack scored, so we'll need a lift here. Then we signed all those lone players, but Weir... I, I can picture him in that uh, strip you like, Stephen, the black and yellow one with a sort of spiky sort of one. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think he scored against St. Johnston wearing that and he jumped into the crowd. So at least he's got got he that. He seemed to really enjoy playing for Celtic. Oh, where, well, he, he seemed to be enjoy being at Celtic. Yeah, well, he seemed to enjoy being at Celtic. So if we're picking three, 
Mm-hmm. Let me just float three for you because there's one player we've not discussed yet. So you're going to have Paddy Roberts. Yes. Eli Nussi. Yes. And Jota. Yes. Oh, boys, that would be dynamite. Jota. I mean, there's a, I can feel a strong front five coming, but Jota, Stephen. I'm going to make a controversial suggestion. Good. But, but after, well, we, after we've discussed Jota, right? So Jota is a current Celtic player, much like Cameron Carter-Vickers, very, very strong loan signing, has done big things for Celtic so far. But, oh, but, so he has mm. taken a bit of a dip as I'm well. Looking He's at you with sceptical eyes here. Can I squeeze in a striker in this front three attacking midfield? Would you want to take one from the striker pile and drop him yes. into the back? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do why that after. Why do we move on yeah. to the striker right. pile then, since you, since you brought it up? Okay. So, you got, you got to name the crap ones first. I've got my little <laughs> list of strikers here, <laughs> okay. and I will name the crap ones first. <laughs> um, Ollie Burke. Oh. Unbelievable that he's considered a striker. I think I think Ollie Burke's the last ten years of Ollie Ollie Burke's career, sorry, last five years of his career, be more generous, have just been managers trying to find out <laughs> where to play this unit. Well, um, Brendan Rodgers moved them up front, and it was a, a shock to all of us because yeah. he was a right winger up until that yeah. point. He, Brendan Rodgers stuck him up front, and he's basically been stuck up front ever since. The the rest of his career, he's been stuck up front now. Doesn't carry a goal threat at all. Remember he dribbled it off the line against yep. Livy and Wade? <laughs> oh, the thing I'm remembering most for is having basically dribbled the ball out of the pitch from the goal line, where it felt like uh, now uh, an empty vessel. Terrible of a, football. Of a guy. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely terrible football. But arguably one of the fastest players ever to have played for Celtic. Mm. Now, that's not just speculation because he has been clocked the speed isn't all that subjective right here <laughs> every time I say he's been clocked I'm remaining for that line for Trassic Park we've clocked a T-Rex at 30 miles an hour <laughs> yeah basically that the, sa- the same experiments on all over but um, he often or when he was playing for West Brom he would come in in like the top 10 sprints of the season mm. and all that so Oliver Burke is an extremely fast footballer but not that, a footballer yeah, that, so being fast it. maybe you should take up American football or something because being <laughs> yeah. fast and strong yeah. doesn't a footballer make yeah. um, I mean the list of strikers Powell Brozek <laughs> anybody get anything to say on Powell Brozek no. Gazump the Huns to him that's yeah. it Gazump the Huns my to favourite thing about Pavel Brozek is that Rangers tried to sign him to mm. pair him with Jelovic I think it would yeah. have been at the time Alan McCoyce is a manager and when Celtic signed them, Alan McCoyce came out in the media and said we never wanted him anyway. <laughs> I, I don't want to check, right? But I've got a feeling that I could be confusing them with someone else, maybe even Zorowski. I'm sure Brozic was one of these players that scored like 31 goals and 35 games or something he, one season. He was in and... Turkey, I think, at one mm. point. I think he was fairly prolific somewhere else, but no, nothing at all for Celtic. Um, alternatively, you could have uh, Miku. Well, he does have Barcelona. Hero of but... Barcelona, yeah. Mm, even then... The best thing about that was if he was sub for Tony Watt. So. I can remember him in that lovely strip, the white one with the, yeah, the centenary yeah. badge thing. Mm. Uh, that's that's it. That's the best thing I can say about him. Uh, as I Jeremy Ali had the year. Oh, what was that? A one month loan deal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brought in by Gordon Strachan and people couldn't really understand why you would bring Ali Adier in because at this point we had Craig Beatty emerging, right? Mm. And Gordon Strachan famously said at that point that you can never have too many players. You can never have too many players who scored goals in your squad. None of those players scored goals. <laughs> box in the box. Yeah. Right? <laughs> exactly. So Jeremy Ali had the air. Yeah. Famous for his misses, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, he, he was the boyfriend of 90s pin-up Leilani. Oh. Yes. Glamour model Leilani. Yeah. So that was about it. That was about it for him. Played for Arsenal for a bit. Had one of those famously quite weird accents where he'd been he yeah. was French but brought up in London so he had one of those kind of funky accents again he ended up at Middlesbrough after that mm. I do remember he was for one season and I can't remember which he was at Lorraine and he was a really good player he mm-hmm. had a really strong season I'm basing this off a football manager at the time <laughs> he was because I'd re-signed him for Celtic but I don't think MD's going to say we're going to get him in the team here no no don't think so Right, final crap striker that I know for sure that you're not going to have in this team anyway I shouldn't even be in the team in the first place Samaras. Oh, he was going to be my suggestion for left wing. Was he? Awful. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> awful. Absolutely awful. A coward. Yep. Um, should never. A, a charlatan that spent far too long at too our long, club. Baby. Absolutely mental. And this cult status that he's got is something I will never understand. Because nah. nah. I can't remember many games apart from Samaras Sunday, but he actually did anything worth talking about. A couple of European goals maybe in there. Uh, that's about it. I kind on of... his day, that was the f- Samaras yeah. phrase, wasn't it? On his day, he's unplayable. unplayable. I never saw that day. I must have, <laughs> I must have missed school that day. <laughs> off that day, No, because that day never happened. He must have been a wizard in training. Samaras is an extremely rare example whereby we all universally agree basically the yeah. same thing on a player. Because you, you get players that were 
either we're big fans of or we're ambivalent towards or one of us is a big fan of and the other two don't really get it Samaras is the one across the board we all just just don't, go, just don't like at all I, I don't feel that strongly about it but I never I was no I didn't get the cult of personality around no. Samaras I didn't think he contributed massively either so no he is not getting in uh, and final player that's probably not going to make it uh, Henri Camara the, the brought in as a loan to, sort of, to replace Larson I think normally that's like a, a a kiss of death. You know, you are the new ex, but I think everyone knew at the time he's not going to replace Larson. Really strong World Cup. What World Cup would that have been? Oh, was it was it Senegal he played for? Yeah, so that it was. would have been two thousand and two, so twenty uh, years ago. Yeah, he, he yeah, the, the really player. a really strong World Cup yeah. for Senegal. At the time he joined us, he was the most expensive loan signing ever. I think we paid one and a half million loan fee. Right. We, maybe the most expensive British loan signing ever. So we really pushed the boat out for a player who had a bit of pedigree, um, but it just it never it never really. He had definitely out. done well elsewhere. He had yeah. a decent career in England, and as you say, internationally he was all right. Should have been good, but Do you I don't know what? actually. Anyone coming I just in glanced down at his, his his Wikipedia. Eight goals in eighteen league games isn't necessarily that bad at a ton. No, no, it's nah. not. It's, it's never going to be a loss, and was he? Yeah. And I think the the way. Martin O'Neill played didn't really suit his game either mm. because we were quite direct and he was one that got in behind but we didn't really play for that and you're looking for somebody plenty of crosses to come in well come on, um, Henri Kamara's not getting an Martin O'Neill had crosses. a knack of doing that didn't he signing players that didn't really fit his system yeah. really, oh, well, how did you end up getting him the, the, a couple of the players that O'Neill inherited like Larson and Maravchik mm. had to replace them at some point and we kiss. Yeah. Kissed a lot of frogs trying to <laughs> try to find that prince um, f- for a while after that. We were linked with every attack in midfield in Europe to replace Moravchik. Kamara was the guy who had the absolutely unenviable task of trying to replace Larson. And I don't envy anyone coming yeah. into that situation. So let, let, let me hear somebody, somebody throw a name out at you that's definitely going to make this a living. Craig Bellamy. Yeah, 100%. Next. <laughs> what, what a player, man. What a player. Oh, yeah, a guy who was far too good for this level oh. far far too good a guy who was never prolific in his career but he scored big goals he mm. scored big you know on big occasions for not a great goal scorer but a scorer of great goals correct for a variety of English clubs basically played for just about everybody in the top flight of England at various points and Cardiff uh, an incredible player uh, absolutely lit up the league I'm just sorry that we couldn't win the league for him yep. to be honest he was one of those guys who won the cup after that famous failure in the league and he didn't care he was just still so disappointed from having you know, chucked the league on the, the last day of the season. Bellamy was sensational for Celtic for that brief half a season. His goal at Ibrox had me convinced oh. we were going to do it. Hmm. His hat trick... Dundee United. Dundee United. The best. One yeah. of, I was going to say one of, but it's, I think it's the best hat trick I've ever seen for Celtic. A couple other... Scored against Aberdeen as well, uh, I'm pretty now. sure. Yeah, and just... Absolutely brilliant. Without question, goes into this team because basically, I think like when we set this up, this premise is about Craig Bellamy. Yeah. And, and maybe <laughs> we make a guy. mockery of our own video. <laughs> Did we not include Craig Bellamy? Yes, in it? Yeah, he's, he's the captain. If anything, let's just give him the armband right now. A, a fantastic Celtic player. He's, he's one of these players who sort of transcends eras a wee bit, doesn't he? Because he played for Celtic in that sort of what you would now consider the sort of post millennium sort of 2005 six yeah. season he was at yeah. Celtic which is like the olden days now but still you've got memories of him playing for like Liverpool and West Ham up until yeah. I mean it was 10 years ago now that you think mm-hmm. about it but still quite recently but he passed through that it's not just the the goals as well it was the attitude on him wasn't yeah. it he was like cut his collar and his top he still don't really know why he did that <laughs> I don't know he didn't take any crap and see that goal at Ibrox where he just kneels down in front of the fans and celebrates the only thing with that game is he went off with a slight hamstring injury that game. Celtic really struggled with the games that he didn't play. I think we get beat by Hibs, Celtic Park 3-1, and that, that was sort of the, the one, because we lost the last two games of the season or something like that, uh, and it was just the was one. Kiriakos he done at Ibrox? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just Tendency, blew yeah. him away, man, for yeah. pace. Bent it in, man. Like, it was just a clip ball down the line from Thompson and he just gets it dribbles inside and bends it and I think gets, it was batter a single and then gets booked yeah. he's he had a famous picture of him and Petrov celebrating going, in front, uh, of, the, front he, of the fans and they're all furious yeah, yeah, yeah that's right yeah, I absolutely loved him and that hat-trick at Tanadice just the the finishes one of them's a first time left foot thing that's mm. unbelievable I remember sitting in the house watching that game going this guy is amazing I remember man. he scored a, I'm sure he scored at Wilsley was at Celtic he played for Wales um, and he's somebody like one of these goals where somebody 
plays the corner and they clip it to the edge of the box and he takes it on the volley oh. and sticks it right in the top bin for the edge of the box yeah. straight from a corner I was like oh I went out and bought a whale strip <laughs> on those really tight yeah. kappa oh, ones aye. Aye, an absolute the John Hartson <laughs> uh, John. Uh, an absolute cracker so Bellamy's in yeah uh, wonderful no well, yeah. uh, anyone else uh, right well I'm going to I'm going to make my controversial call here because there's another name I want to get in there but there's, it's between two and I think mm. one of them could play a different position oh, I, I uh, want to suggest Odson Edward for the left wing position. No, no argument. You're g- not going to get an argument f- from Odds from from me. Yeah, for putting Odson Edward in this team. So, the, so uh, he's in my team yeah. if I was picking, but left wing, no, I don't think so. Could, could we mm. stick three up front then? <laughs> <laughs> so what formation would this end up? So we've got four at the back. Landry and Gumo keeping yep. the keeping the the door closed, protecting the back four, <laughs> and then up front we're going to have three and three. <laughs> Yeah, it's bold. It's bold. Mm. Right, I, I, it's just a play for it. If he doesn't mm. get past the the consensus, if he doesn't get past the committee here, that's fine. Well, but I wanted well, to suggest Edward because what, I can't get him in up front. What you're going to be left with here, right? If we pick another striker, and then I don't know who you've got in mind. If it's not Edward up front with Bellamy, right? Mm. You're gonna. If it's not Odson Edward, you're going to have a straight fight between Jota and Edward for that attacking midfield position yeah. coming yeah. in off the left. Yeah. Now. It's coming in off the left. Jota and Edward, it's a good debate to have. So before we get there, Melly, who have you got a, a pick other than Craig Bellamy for striker? I'd have uh, Edward up there, but the one who would push him would be Robbie Keane because he came in, just looked a cut above again, mm. just a guy too good for the league, shouldn't have been there. The siding that he fought, or oh, maybe we can turn this around, scored loads of goals, but unfortunately we conceded loads of goals. He, you know, I can always picture him in the, the second Bumblebee top as yeah. well. He had great goals up at Kilmarnock, Aberdeen, done his wee celebration. But again, it's a guy that... So patronised, do you wee celebration? <laughs> it's so it was <laughs> pathetic, wasn't it? But yeah. the, the thing is, it was a disastrous Celtic team. Mm. He didn't win the league, he didn't win a cup. So for me, it would be Bellamy and Edward. Robbie Keane, one of these players along with Shea Given, who anytime they do an interview would say things like I always wanted to play for Celtic you just never get the deal done you had enough money <laughs> but the time you know any opportunity you could have went do you know what for the past 10 years I've been earning 50, 60, 70, 80 90,000 pound a week I might just take 30 for a couple of seasons yeah. see how it goes just say those bums couldn't afford me <laughs> yeah, if they tried yeah. now might I remind you your honour your honour I'm mm. going to make the case here only the loan period yes. counts yeah. mm-hmm. so does Edward on his loan, and it's the initial loan, but he was 19 or something like that. Struggled to break into the team at first. Yeah, then did. came in, and he scored that hat Goal trick. Go Ibrox. scored that hat trick against Motherwell and all that. Is that better than Robbie Keane's last st- run to this season where he scored about 16 goals in 19 games or something like that? No, Robbie Keane's scoring record was absurd yeah. at Celtic. Yeah. And as Melly said, one of these players just. The league was too easy for him. Mm, they just yeah. found it far too easy. Yeah. Here. And then you get booted up and down the pitch at, at yeah. Ibrox and yeah, that that game. The Bogera game. The I Bogera. want to watch that game back. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. See if it's, I just want to watch it back, see if it's bad in my mind as I remember, as I remember it being. So uh who's who's you getting your vote here, Melly? Robbie Keane? No, I'm gonna go Edward and Bellamy. Steven? I'm going Robbie Keane for this. Robbie Keane and Bellamy up front. I'm going me. Robbie Keane and Bellamy. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, right. so what do we do with the left then? You've got one position. Um, uh, incidentally, by the way, we didn't even discuss Dyson Maida or John Guidetti. Uh, Maida time <laughs> will tell, but Guidetti. Yeah. Behind the strikers. You could have, uh, the reason I say that Maeda is because you could have him coming off the left if you wanted. Is yeah. he getting in ahead of Jota or Edward? Well, Absolutely e- not. Edward never played on the left for Celtic, no. so it is shoehorning a wee bit, but I can see why. I'd go. Edward El- never played on the left. Yeah. Um, Maybe not technically, but he did. He was fond of picking the ball oh, up in that of course, area. Yeah. I'd go Jota, Elianusi, and Roberts behind Bellamy and Edward. So no place for Robbie Keane. That's, that's, no. that's, that's astounding. Yeah, I would I would go Roberts on the right, Elianusi number 10. The left, I'm open to debate on, but for me, it's Bellamy and Keane. The thing about it is, when you think about our formation all in one, right, putting Edward out there, Messes everything up because the midfield would just get passed right through. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There is the midfield brackets, Landry and Guemo. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, if you put Edward in there, Stephen, what I'm saying is I begin to feel sorry for Nguemo. <laughs> <laughs> just this wee face, like, oh my god, all these players just descending on him, and he's just got to keep the door closed as best he can. So, 
I've had done this thing. I've had done that thing where I'm retroactively. Don't speak too much because I'm nearly on your side. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm a retroactively telling a player what his best position was, even though he never played it. Am I doing? Am I doing that te- standard yeah, thing? Yeah, you're right? doing that Celtic internet thing where people <laughs> people pick a player for talking sake. Let's pick a player that's underperforming in the team at the moment. Give me somebody. I can't. Well, it'd always be Christopher Ayer as a midfielder, despite mm-hmm. never well, yeah, playing yeah, there. Yeah, once yeah, yeah. Christopher Ayer as a midfielder, or you'd look at somebody like I don't know a bad and say, do you know what? I think he'd be cracking at the centre midfield or some mad thing. So you're kind of doing that a wee bit. Best, I think, I'm really struggling here because I I do like Odson Edward (laughs) and I feel bad that he's not in this team. But I think, I want want to think tactically like Melly or I just want the best players. And I think I need to take it all the way back to the beginning of this podcast. Whereas I I was well aware that Arthur Boric wasn't as good a goalkeeper as Fraser Foster. I picked Boric anyway. So I'm going to have to do the same here. I think I'm going to bookend this podcast with the terrible decision making I started it with <laughs> and I'm going to go with you Stephen I'm going to go Odds oh, and yes. Edwards oh, go. So who, and Edward. who drops out behind the strikers then? What do you mean? Well you're going to have Edward out on the left so there's a choice of Jota Elianusi and Roberts No I think I've got uh, yeah I've got Ed, Roberts and Elianusi yeah, along, yeah, along, yeah. along with Odds and Edward so here is the best loan 11 shoehorn into a formation that we've got and as I added a bit of space what I want you to do is as I read the names out I want you to give these players ratings out of five because oh, there's going to be some oh. turkeys in here there's going to be some good ones right in goal Fraser Foster Stephen five Melly five right back John Joe Perry doing be Stephen <laughs> two two I was going to say <laughs> two Melly two. right midfield central defensive partnership of Jason Denier Stephen four Melly four and Cameron Carter Vickers three Four right now, but could be five. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd go with okay. that. Yeah, that's fine. Left back of Badr El Kaduri. One. Yeah, one. One, okay, fine. <laughs> uh, oh, doing a real hero's job <laughs> in that number six position, Landry and Gumo. Two. One. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Paddy Roberts. Five. Yeah, five. Yeah. El- El- Elianusi. Four. Four. Odson Edward. Five. Craig Bellamy. Six, Six. Ah, ten. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a hundred, a hundred stars for Craig Bellin. Robbie Keane, five as well. Five, yeah. and that is it. The best Celtic loan signing since the year two thousand, indisputably wrapped up here on Twenty Minute Tims. Thank you for watching.